Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk today. My talk title originally was why virtual or remote conferences are not the future. However, I have just realized that's not a very positive or forward looking uh, title. So let me change it to something more positive. The challenges of international medium scale meetings in a virtual environment. Let's start by just telling you who, who I am. My name is George Hobbs. I work as an astronomer at CSIRO Astronomy and Space Science. But perhaps more importantly for this conference, I'm a dad. My son is trying to get me at the moment so he can use my computer to play Minecraft. He certainly doesn't want me recording a presentation. I'm someone who likes traveling. I've got strong links with China. I don't like staying up late and have meetings at two o'clock in the morning. And a big issue for this particular conference is I don't have a mobile phone. So what do I mean by a conference? A conference. Well, conferences, of course, mean very different things to different people. If you search for the phrase international conferences on Google, you end up with these different uh, images. You see conferences with an enormous number of people. You get pictures of lots of people concentrating hard on a speaker who's clearly well prepared. He doesn't have any notes or anything as far as I can see in front of him. And you get lots of people standing up looking formal wearing suits. And I just want to point out at the start of this talk that that is not what I personally mean by an international conference. To give you an idea of the type of conference I have in mind, I'd like to talk about the 2005 Hannas Lake Pulsar Conference that I attended. One thing that's quite interesting is I remember this conference extremely well, even though it occurred in 2005. Whereas I must admit that I don't recall much from any Zoom meetings from even a few, few days ago. So who were we? We were about 100 astronomers. You can see that not I don't think anybody there is wearing a suit. And we were in a very inspiring location. Hannas Lake is on the border of Russia, Kazakhstan and Mongolia, and it's in north northwestern China. I think inspiring locations are important. I've heard lots of students say that the travel does attract them to carrying out STEM careers in astronomy. It had a huge number of outcomes. The outcomes from this particular meeting included new collaborations, new grants and financial contracts. The supervisors found new students, the students found new supervisors, there were new ideas. There was, I think, over 60 publications that came out of this particular conference. People were discussing technical issues that got resolved during the, the meeting. And of course, these Outcomes did not come from people listening to the presentations. In fact, I'm not sure I can remember any of the presentations from this conference. Most of these came because we became incredibly collaborative and friendly, mostly because we spent a lot of time trying to push the bus that we were on out of sand dunes. And science is highly collaborative. And collaboration relies on knowing who you want to work with, who you don't want to work with, it requires trust within the team, and all that requires time to get to know people. So my summary of what makes a good uh, medium scale international conference are the new connections, the new collaborations, the new ideas, the serendipitous connections, the way you say come and meet or you hear an amazing talk, you go and speak to that person. Becoming reliant on each other, you build new friendships, you have meals together, which is where a lot of the actual work, I believe, in conferences actually occur. And my belief is that this is very difficult. I don't believe it's impossible, but I think it's very difficult to get the same sort of quality of meeting like this in a remote or virtual manner. So, for example, I recently had an email from a business development team asking how do we manage to finalize financial contracts with China? And the answer is certainly not that we have lots of Zoom meetings or WebEx meetings. The answer is we go and meet the people. We have a dinner with them. We build up very long-term relationships. And over time, 
those relationships convert into these new contracts or new science ideas or new developments. There's a lot of work, a uh, lot of literature on the web about the importance of in-person meetings. I'm certainly not going to read every one of these, but there's phrases, it's all about relationships. There's phrases about building trust, minimizing misinterpretation, the most important thing in communication is to hear what isn't being said, and so on and so on. There's so much about the importance of body language, the importance of having natural conversations, and the importance of being able to focus on particular, particular topics or ideas. But you'll say we've just, this is I think uh, somewhere near the end of our conference, and there'll be a lot of great ideas being presented on how we can fix many of these issues. But I think as in today, it's still very hard to do a meeting like this. We have lots of technical issues. We have lots of time zone issues. We have issues with people getting distracted. I'm sure we've all heard or received questions like this. Does WebEx run on Linux? Can everybody please mute? Can you hear me? Should we all turn our videos off? It's absolutely, in my view, uh, the technology is not ready at the moment. It may be ready soon, but it's certainly not ready as in today. And again, there's this big issue with the remote talks of distraction. I'm either being distracted by my parental responsibilities or I'm being distracted by emails coming in or I'm being distracted by something else going on, which I generally don't get this same distraction in an in-person meeting. But we'll say that's okay. In a few years, five years, that will all be, be fixed. We'll have great ways to deal with these sort of challenges. And I partly agree, but I also worry about the challenges we have and are seemingly growing relating to security issues. We now have India and America banning many of the Chinese apps. We have China banning many of the US apps. And where is this going to end? What's the implications of this? for the remote virtual meetings is certainly not something that I think is clear at the moment. One of the biggest challenges, and I don't personally have any suggestion for how we get around this, are time zones. I'm trying to organize a meeting next week with people from Sydney, London, Beijing, Delhi, Los Angeles, New York, and Auckland. And the answer is there is no good time to have this meeting. Somebody is going to be having this meeting at two o'clock in the morning or or very late at night. It's going to be a very, very difficult uh, meeting to have. Some people like that, but certainly for myself, I prefer to get on a plane, deal with the jet lag and have the meeting during daylight hours than doing it at two o'clock in the morning. We'll say, OK, even maybe we can fix these sort of issues or I can learn to light the nights or something. In a little bit of time, in 50 years, we'll have the technology, we'll have people will have changed how they work. But I think even in the long term, we're going to have a challenge for this type of meeting. And that's because we're not all going to be on the Earth. I might be on the Earth, you might be on the moon, a friend will be on Mars, somebody will be traveling uh, from the moon to Mars. And we're going to have propagation time delays of up to 24 minutes. And of course, latency, I think, on the long term will be the biggest challenge for these remote and virtual meetings. So in summary, I don't want to be too negative. I think many meeting types can and should be held remotely. And I think, of course, during any global pandemic, it's absolutely key that meetings are held remotely. However, I think these mid-sized international conferences, which have the primary goal of pushing science and developing new collaborations, these are quite common. These are very important for the research field, but I believe they're a huge challenge to run remotely. I think in the short term, our issues are technical issues and time zones. I think in five to 10 years, we're going to be hit by the security issues and the time zone problem will not go away. And I think on the long term, we'll have latency issues. So I think you can either be very negative and say, well, this won't work. We can't do this in a remote or virtual way. Or you can take it in a more positive light and say, this type of meeting must be the hardest to get right in this virtual or remote manner. And so if we can work out how to do this type of meeting, 
then I'm pretty sure that all the other types of meetings will work quite easily. I do, I have no problem if we manage to solve these issues, the technical issues, the personal issues, the way we work issues, but I do have an issue if our institutes force this on us simply because it's a cheaper way to do things. And so in that, I hope we can enjoy some, some discussion and thanks for listening to this presentation.